Welcome to my first XNA tutorial. This tutorial will just cover a uh, game timer class, which is useful for uh, such such games as uh, fighting games, um, racing games, anything really that needs some sort of countdown timer. Um, it could even be used for uh, you know uh, the timing between like waves of a of a like FPS zombie game. Um, there's a lot of uses for it. So to start, we're just going to create a new project, Windows game, call it Game Timer Tutorial. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, when that loads up, we're going to create a new class, call it Game Timer. Be careful not to call it uh, Game Time because that already exists in the Microsoft X9 framework. And for this class, we're going to include two things. We're going to include the, the basic framework and the graphics uh, section of the framework. Now, the class is going to have uh, you know, a, hand, a handful of variables, um, the, the first of which we're going to include a sprite font because each game timer should have its own uh, font. Um, you know, so you can have custom fonts. Um, next is a a string text, which is the text that's to be, to, uh, that's going to be displayed. Uh, next is a float, the actual time. And the next uh, three variables are going to be uh, boolean variables um, that are used for uh, determining when the timer should uh, you know stop or start. Um, so the first is going to be started, private pool started. Next is going to be paused. And the last finished. So basically uh, now we're just going to create um, a basic con constructor. But before we do this, we should think about um, making this a uh, a game component. Um, it might be a good idea, uh, but it could also be a good idea to, to make it not a game component. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to show you uh, how it, work, it would work as a game component. Um, So making something a game component basically means that you can add it to the components of of a game, um, and it'll be tied to the update update loop of the game itself. Um, it also has access to to a lot of things like the uh, like the game and its window and viewport. Um, so basically, we're going to set up this constructor there um, now. For this constructor, we have to think about what what we want. It's going to be a pretty simple constructor. Basically, all all we need to set is the start time of the timer. Um, we need to know like what what time uh, we want the timer to start at, and then count down from. So, if you want it to start at ninety, we'll set it the, set it to ninety in the constructor, and then set it, and then it'll count down from there. Um, so, basically, we're going to pass in float called start time. We're going to set time equal to start time. There you go. Now, the next things that we have to set are pretty simple. We just have to set all these uh, these Boolean variables to false. And there we go. That's our constructor. Pretty simple. Now, we're going to need, um, in addition to the variables and the constructor, a uh, set of properties. Starting with the sprite font. So we're going to have a sprite font property that basically just returns our font and sets our font. So. And we're going to have one for the 
uh, the text. We'll just return our text and set our text. Next is a uh, fair, uh, a property for basically all these Boolean values we're going to want. Turn paused set paused equal to value and finally whoop. set finished equal to value. Okay, so now that we have our properties, we're going to start actually doing some coding. Now, because this is a game component, we can actually override the update and we're going to have to create there's one we could overwrite. Oh, because it's not a. Uh, there's, there's two types of game components you can make. You can make a regular game component. You can make a drawable game component. This one we're just we just have as a uh, a regular game component. We're just going to create our own draw method. So in the update method, here's where the magic is going to happen. Uh, first, we need a we need to store a delta time, basically the time since last frame, um, as the game time dot elapsed game time total seconds. The reason we have this value is this is what we're going to be subtracting from the the time variable to to get that countdown effect. So uh, first, now we're just going to make the the main loop. Um, so first, we have to see if if the game timer has been started. Otherwise, we're not going to uh, countdown um, and the reason for that is uh, in games like fighting games there's usually a delay before the timer actually starts so you don't want we want to be able to control when that happens um, and next is we don't want to actually do the countdown um, unless the the timer is is not paused uh, if the timer is paused such as someone paused the game then we're gonna actually uh, then we're not gonna we're not gonna count down because like that would be terrible for a fighting game if, if someone hits accidentally you know hits uh hits pause and the timer still goes down that's an easy way to you know uh, TKO someone time time KO uh, so we gotta we gotta deal with that um, so now we're gonna actually do the the countdowning so if time is is greater than zero we're gonna subtract from it delta time otherwise we're going to set finished equal to true so basically if the timer or the current time um, is greater than zero so it hasn't count counted down all the way we're going to keep subtracting from it uh, a second every every second um, else uh, it's it's finished um, so basically that's all we need it's a pretty small loop but does the trick and next we're gonna want to actually set that that text equal to the time dot to string so every every time we reiterate through this update loop we're gonna set the current value of time into text. Um, if we were to just set it uh, once, um, it, it wouldn't actually update. You'd be stuck at you know 90 or whatever you set it to. 
Um, so we have to actually keep that in the update loop. The alternative would be to actually not have this, this stored variable and just put this in the draw method, which we don't really want to do. We want to have uh, some sort of way to access it. Um, so next we're going to draw string using our font, using our text, and here's where we have to think about it. Uh, we have this position. Now, for the purposes of the tutorial, I thought about just sort of um, doing a, a hard-coded in position uh, to display sort of up at the very top um, in the very center of, of the window. Uh, but it might be a good idea to actually give the timer a position variable that uh, we can create a property for. And so we'll be able to actually set that um, outside when we create it. And for now, we're just gonna set it to to color dot white um, as the font color. So, okay, we we have this this going going good. Um, now, that's pretty much all we need. Um, what we're gonna do now is. We're gonna actually go into the game uh, 1.cs and actually create the timer. Go down to the load content method. Go timer equals new game timer. Pass in this and whatever you want the timer to start at. I'm gonna pick uh, 90. So now we have this. We're also gonna want to go timer dot font is equal to. Now we're gonna have to actually put it. Add in a um, not an existing item, her to do uh, a new item, a sprite font. I'm just going to call it uh, font, and maybe we'll change the uh, the font size as well to 18. Um, completely optional, uh, and we're going to set that to content load sprite font font. We're going to set the um, called the uh, position equal to a new vector 2 now here we're going to actually get the the client bounds dot width we're going to divide that by 2 and then subtract from that um, the timer dot font dot measure string text dot x divided by two and then pass in zero for that now let me explain this basically if you want to ever uh, have something render um, perfectly halfway through especially with strings first you have to get basically ha ha the position um, the x position of completely dead center in the window of the client bounds but also you have to account for the fact that uh, your the position of the string is going to be the up upper left hand corner of that string of the first letter. So we're gonna have to subtract from that the the length of the string divided by two. So basically half that um, to get it back to to have it be perfectly centered. And then just pass in zero for the uh, y value. Um, so that should be perfectly fine for that. Um, next, we're gonna we're gonna call the timer dot update. Pass in game time. But also, actually, we we don't even have to do that because what we can do is we can go into the We, since we made it a component, we can just add it to the components. 
and we'd never even have to call its update down here. What we do have to draw uh, call is is it's its uh, draw method. Remember to call begin and end, or else you get some errors. Now, let's see if this runs. It should. Oh, we're getting some errors. Ah, text is no. That makes sense. Because basically, the reason this is happening is uh, what I'm what I'm doing is I'm trying to um, use text, which is never set uh, to anything before before it's actually ever called the update. Because the only time we ever we ever set text to anything is right here. So what we should do is right down here set it to the empty string. And now it's fine. Now it's displaying perfectly. So what we're going to want to do now is uh, actually, if you notice, um, it's not actually counting down. The reason is it's not started. We have to actually start it. So in this update, what we're going to do is we're going to get a keyboard state. We're gonna make some statements. If statements is key down keys dot space timer dot started equals true. So now if we run this and we hit space, there it goes. It's counting down. So now that's working. Now we can also do if keys dot p timer dot paused equals to true. Now let's see what happens. Let's start it and then let's hit p. There we go. Now you can also Make it Q. Dot paused equals false. Now, if we hit space, we hit P, we hit Q, starts back up again. We hit P, we hit Q, starts back up again. There you go. So, one thing that we, we can do, though, if you notice, it's, it's showing. Uh, Quite a few decimal places because it's a floating point number. In here, if you don't want that, um, right down here, what we can do is we can cast this to an int before we we uh, place it into the text object, and this should clip all that because now it's it's no longer storing the uh, Two string of a floating point number and only uh, giving us the integer. Um, it's still just as precise in the background, um, but it's only giving us the the integer uh, version. So, and it still works with pause. So there you go. That is basically the the basics of um, making a game timer. Now. Uh, you can expand this. Um, you can make it. Uh, you can make an enum called um, basically uh, timer settings. Um, if you wanted to do make it for like a fighting game, and make some basically default values for the start time, and make a new constructor that takes in this this uh, in, in a value of, of timer settings. Um, there's a bunch of shit, uh, stuff you can do do with this. Um, so. I hope you uh, enjoyed the tutorial. Um,
kind of late, so I was getting tired, but uh, I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.